And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. It is the Weighing In Podcast, and we have no fights this week. So, this is our 500th episode. 500. It's like the Indy 500. This is a big number. And we're going to do a question and answer today to see if we can put some information out there with everyone. We've done a couple of interviews. We've got some good things coming your way. But for our 500th show, we just want to answer your questions, talk to you, and see what you guys think about what we think as far as answering your questions. My man, Josh Thompson, has taken his glasses off. That means he's serious and he doesn't have to look at a screen because there's no yes, fights. That's exactly but what it is. It's all good. <laughs> he's ready to go. How you feeling, my man? Well, I'm feeling hungry right now. I start, I'm on a full 24 hours on a water fast. I plan on going till Friday. It is Tuesday. Um, I'm already 24 hours in. So if I can get to Friday, that'd be, that'd be awesome. I think, I think maybe Thursday, I'll probably start to fold a little bit. Oof. I'll probably start to fold, but you were a hundred percent correct though. I definitely took my glasses off because I don't have to look at a screen and try to read someone's that. name. There you go. It's perfect. Like who's, who's on this card? Who's fighting? I don't need to worry about that because I'm not reading the screen. Boom. I normally have to read the screen because we're still trying to figure out whether George can read or not. But let's find out what's George can Q&A read. Today. I know he can. We have Q and A today, so George, we're gonna find out right now. Can George read? Go ahead, George. Have at it. What's the first question? Well, I'm just gonna personally ask my first question as George oh. Harris. So, ooh, there you go. I, I don't gotta read for this one. Nice. Did you guys see Floyd Mayweather change referees in the middle of his <laughs> John Gotti fight number two? You know, uh, yes, what's your I opinion? did. I did see it. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. First off, that referee has had lost his freaking mind. <laughs> Floyd throws a lead hook. He's standing in front of his opponent, throws a lead hook, and the guy says he's hitting him behind the head. That that's not hitting behind the head. Okay, that is not what that rule is. And so I I'm I'm being honest. I haven't taken Floyd's you know side in a whole lot of things. <laughs> but I'm all over. I'm on Floyd's side. That was absolute ticky tack bullshit. Why are you in, inflicting yourself into this thing? It's a goddamn exhibition fight, and he didn't even hit him hard. And it was everything about it was legal. I mean, it was, it was an exhibition fight. I mean, it's what you get. You might as well go to a charity event and just watch two bums fight. That's what it was. <laughs> I felt like I was watching bum fights for, fighting for cheeseburgers from McDonald's. Might have been. That's what it was. I mean, look, Floyd can obviously box, and the Gotti guy, I mean, he can. he's got some skill. It's not, not going to underappreciate him. Look, he's he was an MMA skill. fighter. Gotti's had MMA yeah. fights. Yeah, but I mean, it realistically, it was Boxing's just a charity event. Charity yeah. event for these guys to get paid. They got paid Bingo. millions, and that's all. Good for that. So I don't really care what happens to the referee because it didn't the, really matter. The, I I thought it was great that you know, all of a sudden you know the, the referee was basically telling the crew staff, "Hey, he's not listening to me." And they said, "Get out." <laughs> I, I'm not too sure that it was Floyd got the credit for getting him out, but it was really the commission that took him out. Yeah. I mean, why, why do you even have a referee for that? It's it's a charity event. Just you guys go out there. Like, the first hey, fight, they happens, tried I mean. to fight after because, the fight because they were fighting after. after. That's what you have security for, not a referee. A referee's not going to do anything to stop the fight. <laughs> not pick That's, you up aren't they throw, in there throw trying you to out fight? of the damn ring? So wait a second. We have a referee, so a fight doesn't break out in a fight. Got Boom. it. Got like it. Just want to make idea. sure it's the same thing. Good idea. That's what you just said. Wait, we want to have a referee, so a fight doesn't break out in the middle of a fight. Understandable. I got it. That's what security is for. Okay. And this was never a fight. That's what, that's what I was asking. Why did we have a referee? It was never a fight. Oh man, it has to you, look like one, Josh. Yeah. Like, did your parents ever watch? Uh, uh, what do they call? What are the soap operas? Did your parents watch soap operas? Oh my! My mother watched the soap opera Days of Our Lives. Yep. My mom, dude. General I, Hospital, hate, I hated that. God, every time I'd hear that freaking, that have this freaking, what are the, what do you call the sand thing? You know the uh -huh. the, the hourglass, the hourglass. thing. And it would have the like the sands of time. It is yeah. etched in my head, yeah. like the sands of time. So are the days of our lives. And she, doo -doo -doo, and I was like, oh, I was a little kid, and I hated it. Was Just it, get me out of here. Was the days of our lives the one where they, she, they had the hot smoking uh, Italian looking girl Elizabeth something? 
No, you're name? you're talking about uh, Susan. Susan. I can't or anyways, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, anyway, Re- yeah. yeah, something yeah. like that. She was yeah. was that she on Days of Our Lives? No, the, I can tell you as a young kid, there was a couple of smoking hots that were in oh. there, but I can't tell you a name. There, yeah, they were smoking hot. That's why I only watched Days of Our Lives because they were smoking hot. Not, not these. I watched soap operas. They always had smoking hot. Oh girls. God, it's horrible. Yeah, it was bad. It was horrible. Bad. General stuff. Hospital was the one my mom watched. She watched the General Hospital. Anyways, all right. What else you got for us, George? All right. This is from subscriber Esco Tofio. Thank you for subscribing, my friend. We're gonna have a giveaway very, very, very soon for you guys. Mm-hmm. But his question, well, he asked like a ton of questions, but I just picked one of them. Oh, what would happen? Good. What would happen if Alex Pierre comes down to uh 185 and DDP also weighs 185? Would the commission ever sanction for the light heavyweight title and middleweight title to be on the line? Because theory is both fighters made the weight. Josh, you can answer that. Yeah, because they only made the weight for 185 if Alex came down. So the 205-pound weight class wouldn't be uh, up for grabs. So and, and, and even if DDP went up, it wouldn't be the same either. So um, it would be one title at a time. They'd have to fight. Uh, Alex would have to come down, make 185. If he wins that, then he can go up and he can keep his title there at 205 also. Or DDP can have Alex come down and they could fight there at 185. And if ddp wins he can go up and challenge alex at 205 for his title there but he's got to make him got to make the weight twice 205 185 whatever it is there you go man see, see i'm so proud of you i should have taken that fucking command class <laughs> <laughs> you would have failed probably probably i heard All i know the, i heard i know the owner i might have got a little lucky shoving some some no no okay <laughs> Uh, what else? All right. We got Apple Bottoms Jeans 1951. Yes. Apple uh, Bottoms Jeans. Apple Bottom Jeans, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Josh, what sort of things would you say to yourself before a fight? Did you try to be calm or did you try to hype yourself up? Same thing I tell referees right now. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sit in the back. I Dude, swear to okay, you. Okay, hold on. Did you honestly say that was what you were thinking? Yeah. Because, okay, the truth is, that is my line to new referees. You know, like, hey, you ain't last me on thing. Yeah, don't fuck this up. John, <laughs> you know, Mike Beltran would get the, he's got, Mike Beltran's got beautiful blue eyes, right? And his eyes would go, you know, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, um, I said that to Mike Beltran for your fight because your fight with Nate Diaz was his first main card fight in the ufc yeah and like mike mike is always you know he's always amped and ready to go and and nervous and you know and and he's he was talking and stuff and i said mike just go do what you know how to do you're gonna be fine yeah okay is there anything else you're saying yeah there's one last thing i need to tell you mike don't fuck this up (laughs) right and he just like froze like and that was your fight yeah, I, I I like to remind him that I popped his cherry for the main card. That's that it, was man. I was the first one he ever cherry. got. To, yep, on the main card. That's funny. Um, yeah, no, I used to tell myself in the back because most of my fights, uh, I really believed that I I should have beat every single one of them. You know what I mean? Um, outside of the ones that I know, obviously I lost. I mean, the Eve's Edwards fight, I lost 100. percent I felt like I lost. Uh, the Tony Ferguson fight, well, you were, I felt like but you were winning that fight. No, I understand that. You were I, winning every bit of that fight yeah. until you weren't. Until, until I decided not, <laughs> until I decided to be stupid. Like that that was when I, I started kind of telling myself, don't fuck it up, was around that, after that fight. It's because I really, in moments in that fight, I was winking at Matt Hughes. I was waving at Jens Pulver. We were in the clinch against the fence. I was just being a dumbass. I was yeah. like, dude, this guy's not strong. You know, like he's a little bit, you know, he's crafty on the feet. As long as I keep him in the distance. I felt like I could do anything to him. I was scooping him up, lifting him, slamming him. I mean, the round was pretty much done. I, I dominated the round. I mean, I had takedowns. He was able to get up. He kind of nullified a lot of what I did. But I just made him one big mistake. And I was like, man, round two is going to be easier, you know, because the takedowns were coming so easily. And I did the spinning. I remember, had Bob Cook not said 20 seconds on the clock, I wouldn't have went for the spinning back fist. I wouldn't have done it. I would have just kept fighting because I was like, I felt like the round, I felt like 
the round had just started. I was not tired. I was in the best shape of my life for that fight. I was running, you know, uh, two 800 yard sprints. Then I was running six 440 sprints. Then I was doing uh, four 100 sprints. I was running so much for that. I was in such great shape for that fight. After at, at the end of that fight, besides the knockout, that when he said 20 seconds, I wasn't even breathing heavy. I didn't feel tired. I didn't feel exhausted. I didn't feel like, oh man, I got to get the takedowns. I was having fun out there. And most of the time when I'm out there having fun, I just felt like I couldn't be beat. I go back to my first uh, Gilbert fight and that type of stuff. I mean, I just felt like I couldn't be beat, man. Just, it was one of those fights. Just, and that was when I started telling myself, don't fuck this up. Don't be a dumbass and fuck this up because you, you have all, everything I need. I knew I was good. I just had to believe in myself. There's moments where I got in my own head, but yeah, I used to tell myself, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. You got this. Don't fuck it up. As I walk to the cage by myself, you know, and you've got your team behind you, but they're 10, 10 feet back. I'd walk towards the cage and I would be punching my gloves, you know, the whole thing like fighters do and, you know, and kind of hit my jaw a little bit. And I'd be like, Hey, don't fuck this up. You got this. Don't fuck this up. I would tell myself that all the time. It was just one of those things I told myself, you know, and it worked majority of the time. Until I got older. <laughs> <laughs> so, it worked majority of the time. Yeah. Uh, right. What else? Until, until I went and fucked it up. Yeah, so I went back. <laughs> First part of this question, Big John, has anyone ever intentionally not fought in the cage to get an easy check? Like they go into the cage and then they, you know, they lose on purpose basically. Have I seen fights like that? Yes. Have I officiated a fight like that? Um, yeah, I always say that there was two fights in the UFC, but it was early early on that were uh kind of set up as far as you know uh, anthony Maci uh, macias was an early fighter in the ufc he fought dan severn in his first fight and he's the guy getting suplexed over and over but he was in the next uh next ufc um uh, that was no he went he, that was ufc four then he was in ufc six and he was managed by the same guy that was managing oleg Taktarov. And they ended up both being in the semifinals. And Tank Abbott was going to be in the finals on the other side. And so the manager, a guy named Buddy Albin, who was a, a cheat, he basically told, you know, Anthony, you need to throw the fight. You know, get get it. Don't don't make Oleg, you know, have to you know burn any energy or anything like that. And so he he threw the he stuck his head into a guillotine. Not a doubt in my mind. He did it on purpose. And so we you know were the, was there possibilities of fights that you know you look and you go well did he did he you know get tapped on purpose yes hmm. all right next question from beast man classic who are your top five prospects in the ufc that you feel like have lived up to their hype long term Oof. let's see I need my glasses the, for this. One. I mean, it, it, it also depends on where you want me to go back to. You know, yeah. John Jones was was a twenty three year old you know prospect, and I said that guy's going to be world champion. He's lived up to the damn uh, hype. You know, Islam Makhachev is a guy that you looked at and you went, man, he's good. He's just dominating as far as he's lived up to the hype. Um, the ones that. Uh, have come along that I want to say that are still in that position of, you know, we, I knew Umar Nurmagomedov was going to be special. He's getting, he's just getting better and better. And uh, his fight against Corey Sanhagen, you know, people don't realize how impressive that fight was because the first round was really the only one that you could look and say, Corey, you know, was kind of in the fight. And from that point, Umar just took over. And it wasn't that Corey wasn't fighting. It was just that he couldn't answer, answer the, the riddle that Umar was of when he was getting taken down and how to get himself back and what to do. And he was working his ass off to do everything he could. That is a guy in uh, Umar Nurmagomedov you're looking at, you're going, dude, he's going to be a champion. There's no doubt he's going to be a champion. And uh, if I was going to pick another one... It was, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and say Alex Pahea was a kickboxer that I had watched multiple times uh, in glory and been around, 
And when he was starting his MMA career, I talked to a guy named Mike Kogan, who was um, he, uh, one of the guys for Bellator. And I said, man, you got to get Alex Pajaya. He's going to fight MMA. You got to get him. Right. And he, he looked at me and said, I'm not getting no goddamn kickboxer that wants a ton of money. Why the fuck would I do that? I go, because he's going to end up going to the UFC then. And he goes, let him go get beat in the UFC. Well, that hasn't really happened a lot. <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, those are the things that happen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Um, I think in terms of we're kind of on the same track, uh, but I'm going to throw one out there. I know he has not become the champion. Um, he was the interim champion, I believe. But I would say Justin Gaethje. He came over with a lot of hype surrounding him from the World Series. He was of undefeated. He was undefeated. A lot of people were like, oh, it's, you know, you're, you're smashing cans over there, this and that, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Yeah, you know what? I mean, he came the real over. Deal. He's a fucking, he's just like, you know, what do they call him? The, the highlight reel? Highlight, human, human highlight, highlight reel. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And he is. So I got to give that guy some love, man. Um, you know, he, uh, Islam, had he had some big shoes to fill, but he's living up to it. That notice notice how Josh is staying in the 155 pound range right yeah. here. Yeah, okay. it's funny. It's funny you say that. All, all my guys are 155. That ah, I'm going to bring up. Right you, now. Are all of them. you are all horrible. of them. You are all of them. I've got one that's not in the hundred, not in the 155. But, um, but yeah, I would say I go Islam, and then I would say BJ. BJ came in. There was not a lot of hype around him, but then as he got rid of Din Thomas that fast, hold it, they, hold it. I'm having a heart attack here. What no. do you mean there was no hype around him? There was now, hype in terms of his jujitsu, but guys like Joe Silva, they weren't high on him. First off, that's one person. Yeah, but that one person no, was no. the matchmaker. There was, yeah, <laughs> John, he, okay, but, that one let, person was the matchmaker. Come on, man. He there got his arm nothing. twisted to bring him in. There was nothing but hype around BJ, man. Yeah, it, BJ, okay. look, at BJ was the hot topic. So we, you, we I, had cannot say we had a difference of opinion, like not difference of opinion. We have a different take on it because maybe I was in the gym and it was like, they're not giving him any respect, man. They're not showing him that like, you know, they gave him the Joey Gilbert fight first. That was the fought, first fight. Then he fought Dean Thomas. Then he fought Caruno and then he fought Palmer. Correct. I think that's the, the routine. Yeah. Of what it was. Yeah. I, was, I think that is. I, I felt like they it might have it, it been. It might have been. Uh, the Cal Uno was actually after the D, the uh, Pulver fight because he came in at UFC 31. Mm -hmm. He fought Joey Gilbert there. He yeah. Then he he fought Dean Thomas. I want to say it was UFC 32. Yeah. Okay. And then he fought Jens at 35. Did he? I thought I thought he fought Dean Uno, Uno Jens. Dean yeah. Uno then Jens. Dean. Right? Yep. So did yep. he? So he did fight Uno. Yeah. Uno Jens. was before. Yeah. Okay. But that was yeah. an eleven second knockout. Yeah. At yeah. UFC thirty four high voltage. So, see, so he went thirty one, thirty two, thirty four. Yeah. And then thirty five. Yep. Yeah. And so look, I, I've got with BJ for me, there was we we had a lot of hype about him in the gym. He's so good here. He's so good this. Da, 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 da. Picking up boxing really well, all this stuff. But I felt like it wasn't until after the Dean Thomas performance. Cause in the Joey Gilbert fight, Joey Gilbert was smaller than him. Shorter and stockier, but yeah. it had good wrestling. Good wrestling. But BJ just dominated, like got to the back, flatten him out, just sure. smash him, just punch smash. big shots, all that stuff. But it wasn't until he fought Dean Thomas that people were like, oh, Dean Thomas is his height, he's long, he's fast, he's athletic. Da, da, da. How's he going to deal with well, it? Well, Dean Thomas, you got to figure, was the number one lightweight in the world for, for a certain amount of time. Yes, he was. Yeah. You know, Dean Thomas was the real deal. <clears throat> Where was he fighting at, though, before? Because I had never heard of Dean Thomas before that. Dean was fighting in what was called the WEF, yep. World Extreme Fighting. Hmm. And he was fighting for a guy named Jamie Levine, who was a pain in the ass. And, he, uh, but he beat Jens that, Palmer. He beat Jamie Jens Palmer. Pulver in the WEF. Hmm. And uh, that's, what, that's what made him the number one lightweight in the world at the time. And then hmm. he came into the UFC... And that was, I believe that was his first fight in the UFC. Was it was. BJ. It was his first fight. Yeah. yeah, but I just remember the rubber guard that he was playing, BJ was playing, hanging on the arm, trying to attack the, the Gogo Plata and the Uma Platas yep. and that stuff. You know, and that was something that in relative, pretty much no one no, knew about it. No, people were, didn't understand that. At yeah, the they time. didn't understand the dexterity he had in his hip. Anyways, uh, then I have I have Usman or Magomedov. It's, Boy, he's, he's good. someone. I, I, I'm going Helmer on these guys in terms of the 55-pound oh, weight class. Oh, he's good. He's good though. 
I mean, feeling. look, I look at Islam and Usman. The reason why, because I know them, yes. But on top of that, there's a lot. They've got some big shoes to fill. There's a lot of pressure on them to keep this going. Umar, same thing. You brought up Umar, so that's why I didn't bring him up. Yeah. You know, but Umar, same exact thing. There's big shoes to fill, man. That Habib thing is real. They they have to follow. Not only that, but they're outside of Islam. But I mean, Usman's related to him. Umar's related to him. Like Islam is best friend since they were in kindergarten. I mean, like there's there's shoes to fill there there's a lot of pressure you know father's plan this thing uncle's plan like whatever it is yeah that that's 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 real it's hard enough being a fighter and trying to get to your goals let alone having to have the pressure of your coaches you know being having passed and his plan to make me this and make me that i've got to live up to that you know and and that that there's a lot to be said about what they're doing right now so islam usman umar you know, BJ Penn, I have him in there. I've got Justin Gaethje as well. But I will say this. The guy who has lived up to it so far, um, it, there's two of them, both in the heavyweight division, um, would be to me, Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall right now is living up to it. Now, that could all change with the loss to John Jones. I mean, I don't know. But I'm simply saying, like, I, I just don't see. He, I think he ends up being the champion for a long time. I don't see anyone in this weight class. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't. I don't see anyone being able to beat him. I don't understand who's going to beat him. Like he's got. He's got heavy hands. He's good at takedown defense. He's good off his back. He's good at being on top. All of those things. Uh, but I put Tom up there. Um, you know. And then for me, I'm going to go back to being a homer again. Is to me in the heavyweight division. He he lived up to it. It just wasn't long enough. Was Cain Velasquez. He, there was people don't forget that the reason why he was in the UFC is because no small promotion could find people to fight him. They said, no, I'll fight him in the UFC. That's it. I will not take a chance of me losing to him in a small show and ruin my chance of getting to the UFC. I would rather lose to him in the UFC and have a chance to maybe fight another person after that loss. That's what the take was from almost every heavyweight that I had ever talked to, or we had had relationships with and said, Hey, how come you don't fight Kane in the King of the Cage? How come you don't fight Kane in the uh, W, whatever, whatever the WC? WEC. At the yeah, time. whatever it was. Yeah, yeah whatever he, you he could fought fight in Strike Force and then he fought in Bodog. Yeah. yeah the, but that was, and then who did he, like, there was, he didn't fight, he didn't fight uh, Big Country. Big Country fought someone else. Um, but I'm saying, like, those guys over there for him to fight over there, he was struggling to get fights over in Bodog, too. They were having to pay extra money to get him to. To get guys to fight him, they're like, no, no, we heard about him. He's an AKA. Like, we know, like, he's, you know, he's fucking up my Kyle. He's beating up Paul Bonatello. They're like, no, we're good. We'll stay away from that until we get to the UFC. That's what the take was. Calvin Ayers, I think, was the owner of Bulldog, right? Yeah, yeah. He had he had to pay extra money to get Kane opponents, and Kane would go out there and still make it look easy. It was just, why, why do I want to pay this guy so much money or pay your opponent a lot of money to come out here and lose? And so, and and not, we knew he was going to lose, but I don't want to pay him a lot to lose in you know in in the first round. I want to see a little bit of fight. Yeah. So, but I I look at the Cain Velasquez one. He lived up to the hype. There was people talking about him. There was a buzz about him. Um, f- manager, not managers, but other fighters would come and spar. You know, come visit AK and train, and they were heavyweights, and they'd go, "Yeah, you. It looks like you guys already got a heavyweight." Like <laughs> I'm like, you know, like you guys can stay here because DC had just came too. Yeah, and so we we had DC, we had Kane, we had uh, Paul Bonatello and Mike Kyle. So we had four heavyweights at the time. Then we had Justin Eilers too, was a All American or national champ out of Mizzou. I mean, he couldn't fight, but he that wasn't he Justin Eilers. Not Justin Eilers. Justin, was Jake, Jake. I want to say Jake. Ma- that was uh, was it Jake? Was it no Jake? Mark? It was Mark. 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 Thank you. Mark. Um, not Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis. Yes, Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis, yes. It is, Mark Ellis. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, Mark Ellis. I had it backwards. Eilers, Ellis. That's all right. Anyways, but yeah, those were, we had all these heavyweights that were there, man. It was, so when guys came in to spar, LeVar Johnson, he was with us too. So we had guys that would come in and Kane would line them up and knock them down. And guys that would come in to watch, they're like, who the fuck is this guy? He's not in the UFC. Why is he not in the UFC? UFC wants to see him fight more, but we can't get him fights. That's how it all worked out. Yeah, crazy. So, but that's my list. I know it's a little bit longer than five, but it is what it is. It's all right. It's, all it's my show. I make up the rules. <laughs> <laughs> right, John? That is true. That is true. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, 
When it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink elements so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. All right. Speaking of defunct companies, for both of you, what uh, from Robert Stifler? Let me give him a shout out. For Stifler's you, mother. Sorry. <laughs> what is your guy's favorite fight across any organization, even including organizations that are still not in business, like Pride, Strike Force, Bodog, WEC, Elite XC? Mm. Favorite fight across any organization. <sighs> You know, I know, I know this is stupid. Um, it's not stupid. It's just what it is that because it's one of the more recent ones that I've seen. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, man. I went back and watched the. Uh, <clears throat> uh, God, what was his name? Uh, it was Brent Primus and the and the French kid. Oh, uh, Barnaby. Bar- Barnaby. Uh, yeah, Marcel Barnaby. That fight because I was able to call that fight. K side. Fuck, was such a great fight. That was a good. That point. fight was just. They were beating the shit out of each other, like literally holding each other's head and elbowing to the face. Bam, bam. I was like, and I had never seen Barnaby fight outside of like, you know, a couple of smaller shows I'd seen, but he hadn't fought in what, three or four years or something like that. No, he be, beat out of well, Piccolotti, but I, was, I didn't go to that show. Yeah. I didn't work that show. I just saw the, 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 the Barnaby Brent Primus one. I, and it was, it was a great fight. It was so, there was grappling involved. There was sweeps involved. There was a, a submission attacks involved. There was a lot of damage done on the feet. Um, it was it was a fun fight, man. To me, that's the one that's the most recent in my mind, right off the top of my head. Don't get me wrong; there's other high level, like top fighters. I, if I have to go to like, hey, who entertainment wise are the best? Like to me, entertainment wise, that was a good one. It's right up there with um, with uh, Yuri and uh, Glover. Like that was a fantastic fight. Yeah, a lot of mess ups. That's, <laughs> but, what, that's why it's but a fantastic. That's what made it a fight. great fight. That's yeah. what made it a great fight. Yeah. There, there is a fight, and I can't think of the name. I, I, I want to say the guy's name is Jurope, Jurope, J U R O O P something, and I can't even remember the opponent. It was in the PFL, and it was years ago, a couple of years ago. What an entertaining fight! And I, you know, I had nothing to do with it when I wasn't working. You know, as far as that. but those guys knocked each other down multiple times, just went after it. And I just remember like, what a great fight! But it's the same thing, as you know, in uh. Bellator had a couple of them. One was uh, Gugu, you know, George oh, yeah. uh, uh, Jose, excuse me, who fought uh, um, Alex Polizzi. Mm-hmm. And what a back and forth battle that they put on. They, the knees to the head that freaking Polizzi survived was just incredible as far as, you know, it was unbelievable to watch two humans go after each other and hurt each other that way and then come back. I just love those fights. But if I was going to, you know, sit here and say, look again, when you get into the bigger fights and everything, you know, the uh, Robbie Lawler versus Roy McDonald, mm. one of the most epic fights. No bias there though. Cause you were the referee. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, <laughs> it no, no. You know, you guys, it, it, the it, Homer it, it, in this guy, it just shines through in the referee <laughs> position. That's what it is. He doesn't have a gym to dedicate. Like, yeah, I'm a Homer because he's my gym, you know? This yeah. not, no, it's because he's in the cage, and those are the fights. He was the closest in the arena you could possibly yeah. be. But the the other one is I didn't refer that I would uh, say was, um, and it showed me everything I needed to know. I already thought it about one of the fighters, and one of those fighters was Kelvin Gastelum, and he fought Israel Adesanya, hmm. and Israel Adesanya in that fight, in the fifth round, coming out the way he did, told me everything I needed to know. I I, I had refereed Izzy as a kickboxer never did as an MMA fighter but you know knew how good he was and but didn't know as far as the level of heart that he had and that fight showed it to me mm-hmm. and it was Kevin Gastelum against Israel Adesanya is one of the best fights you go back and watch that they beat the shit out of each other in that yeah. fight mm-hmm. and it was great like I guess there's different ways of looking at when you say what's the best. You say across all platforms. I mean, there's so many of them, but like I look at it, okay, if you want to finish, I would probably say it's right up there in the top one, maybe two, depending on who you care about them, is Eddie Alvarez and Michael Chandler. Ugh. I was there in the arena that night in number one. Both I of them. I was a fan. Both of both them. Both of their fights. Both of them. Unbelievable. But I was in the arena at the, at the first one, and it wasn't a big arena. I believe and I was, was at the arena at the, the second one. 
It was what? Oh, you were at the arena in the second one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was at the arena at the first one because Trevor Prangley was the main event. But that was the same night that they had Shogun Hua and Dan Henderson. Yep. So they didn't get the love that they deserved. But that fight to me was a fantastic fight. Unbelievable. You know, but then I and then I also look at uh, Justin Gaethje, uh, Michael, Michael Johnson. Johnson. Boom. Great. Unbelievable. Fight. You know, in terms of finishes, guys, that got finished like that. Those were great fights. They went past two, three rounds. They were in the fourth round and like they went, they went some rounds and you got to see them go through adversity. Both of them, Michael Johnson and Justin Gaethje, Eddie Alvarez and Michael Chandler, both were in a lot of trouble in that. And those yep. fights, yep. even those are great Gaethje's fights. Max watch. Holloway fight. Uh, yes. I mean, no, Gaethje's Max Holloway Gaethje, fight. That was, was a one sided. That yeah. was very one-sided. Like Max kind of ran away with that a little bit, you know, not a little yeah. bit, quite a lot. Was uh, but look, watch. it, it, it oh, was great it, to watch because of the way it in, ended. Unless, that's... unless unless you were Justin's, yeah. <clears throat> but we we wouldn't Fine. be talking about that fight as much had it not ended the way it did. We would have just said like, oh yeah, you know, Max dominated the fight, you know, whatever it was, right? Um, outside of that, other fights that I could really think of, obviously the Dan Henderson and Shogun fight, both of them, great uh, fight. John Attic brought up uh, a, a good point. He brought up uh, one of the fights, uh, Bigfoot Silva and Mark Hunt. Oh, unbelievable fight. For heavyweights, I was like, holy yeah. cow. Like, this was great. You know, so those were some good fights. If you want to get, like, a little nostalgia about things, um, to me, the fight with Frank Shamrock and Tito Ortiz really kind of turned me on to the sport great. even more so because you had this small guy, and I, I trained with him at the time, so I knew how small he was. He was not a big guy. Tito Ortiz was this mountain of a of a guy right just like holy shit this big guy just bullying this guy around you know for the first three rounds and then round four you know and going so on it comes on you're like holy shit yep. what's going on here this little guy's still got a lot of pep in his step you know yep. so there's there's those those type go, of fights you can go back to the uh the very first randy couture versus pedro hizzo go back mm. and watch that fight because randy beats the piss out of him in the first round it has him where you know people are thinking you know i'm gonna stop the fight but pedro's trying you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're trying and you're gonna go and then he attacks randy's legs and i'll tell you what randy couture went through some agony in that fight his legs were beat to shit and he oh. kept going what a fight that was between the two there's so many good ones you yeah. can't just sit there and pick well, let's go back. A throwback. What's the one with uh, Leonard Garcia and... Uh, oh, my God. It's Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie. Holy shit. Like, like, Unbelievable. We could, John and I could do this all day. Uh, yeah. I could do this all day. I mean, there's just been so many. Like, I would like to pull some from Pride back in the old Pride days. Oh, there, mean, dude. If you want to go to a couple from Pride mm -hmm. and take... But, you know, some of them are ass weapons. But there has been some great freaking fights out of Pride. There was, mm -hmm. you know, the the... Noguera versus uh, Shogun Hua fights. Mm -hmm. You know, Rogerio Noguera. Man, they were right. freaking unbelievable fights. I would have went Don Vanderlei against Rampage. Yeah. Great fights. What's that? The what Don Fry. When, when he just kept punching that dude. Oh, that's a good. Don Fry against Takayama. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you what. <laughs> that's just. See, but that's just classic Don Fry. Yep. <laughs> Don Fry was that guy. You know, like, people will say whatever they want. He was entertaining because he just, first off, he had the Magnum PI, you know, mustache. And he just came forward to punch you, you punch a hole in your head. And if you could punch a hole in his head, he would sit yep. there and say, okay. And that's what happened. That fight. And you look and you go, he was just a tough, tough man. Uh, what else you got for us there? All right, this question is from Wing Wing. Hello. Uh, Wing Wing. <laughs> with all your time in the sport, you guys have encountered some of the most incredible athletes in the world. Can you guys shout out some of your gym heroes, men or women, who are absolute specimen in the gym and in smaller fights, but maybe kind of pull it together on the big stage? Fighters who were great in the gym but couldn't pull it together on the big stage. I mean, the most famous one you probably will talk about, the most people will talk about is Vitor Belfort. There's a little bit of a mental midget, you know, when it came to stuff. I mean, had all the talent in the world. Everyone I've talked to, coaches and people that train with him, like, dude, this guy in the gym just destroys people. Destroys people. Makes it look easy. And then he gets out there and sometimes gets in his own head. A lot of it was in his own head. So, um, <clears throat> oh, another person. Uh, let me see. 
I mean, I, I have people we probably wouldn't know or think of, but I mean, for me, it's Thomas Dion's. Like, he was the guy that was fantastic kickboxer. He was a, you know, a really good kickboxer, uh, Sancho guy. Sancho uh, slash Savat guy Sancho, out yeah. of France. Really good. Really good. Just got inside the cage, though, and just wasn't the same. Different. Like, this guy was... This guy's taking down DC. I've got the video proof and I've showed it. He's taking down Luke Rockhold. I've got the video proof and I can prove it. Like, you know, he was just so explosive, so fast. And just on the feet was a fucking pain in the ass. Just couldn't couldn't put together inside the cage, man. I hated sparring with him because he was so quick. A lot, a lot of people will tell you Gray Maynard in the gym mm. was just... I'll be one of them to tell you in the gym. Man, just, you know, no one wanted to go with him, basically. But he never was, and it's not not that he didn't do well in you know his fighting no. career. He just was never to able to you know reach that pinnacle of being the champ, and it was because of guys that were you know Frankie Edgar. Mm-hmm. You know, you take a look, and guys was just just huge heart was able to you know you know get past him and stuff. But everyone will tell you that Gray Maynard at 155 pounds, 185 pounders didn't like going with him. That guy could crack. Yeah. He was could wrestle. Yeah, could crack. He is, you know, he had it all. The bully. I, I, I tell this story all the time. He is the only fighter in my weight class that I ever trained with that I could never take down. I didn't get one takedown on him. I always in my head. Today's the day. Today's the day. Never was the day. <laughs> you remember never. Mike Whitehead? Yeah, I know Mike. Talk, he wrestled in North Idaho College, and yes. I see like like I did. And you talk about a guy that went into gyms and destroyed people. I mean, destroyed world champions, just yeah. made them look bad. But you put him out in the bright lights, he just imploded. <sighs> you know, it just it just happens. You yeah, know, there is a difference, and there's a mentality, and there's just there's a difference of doing it in front of people when there's no pressure. Guys can do great things mm. when you put that pressure on them. And it's some, you know, a lot of it is just self-induced. It just does things to their abilities to, you know, do the same thing. They can't do it. Which is funny. I was the complete opposite. I look like trash in the gym. <laughs> you know, I, I, you, if you remember the ultimate fighter when it first started, uh-huh. it was, you know, they could make the same guy fight over and over yeah. and over. Yeah. And Rashad Evans, I mean, you know, I'll say it now. You know, I, I love Rashad, but he was picked, I think, last in that show, or right at the end. And it was he was consistently put into fight because they were, you know, oh, he, you know, he's he's lazy, he doesn't work hard, he's not that good, and he, you know, he beat Mike Whitehead, he beat Keith Jardine, he beat really. Good people and he ended up winning and as and it was you know matt hughes was one of the ones that was the, the opposite coach and he was kept picking him and it was like why are you picking him <laughs> he's winning <laughs> you know and so and there are guys that just don't look good in the gym yeah there's guys that don't look good against anyone really they just look like you know eh, they're okay yeah he's not really very good there and then you put him in a fight and man everything comes out and he can do it yeah it's true. Like there's, there are some, it's funny because Johnny, it goes all the way down to, to uh, when I do uh, analyst work, I feel like when we do rehearsal, I can't get my fucking words out of my mouth. You always- <laughs> I'm like stumbling, bumbling. But then when the, t- when the I feel like when the TV's on, I feel like I do okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's just that same thing with the fighting, like in the gym, man, that was, it was painful sometimes to, to think of what I had to go through in there. I'm like, man, I'm gonna get my ass kicked by these fucking amateurs today. (laughs) Like that's how bad it could be some days, you know? And then I'm like, what, what are you doing, man? You're fighting, you're fighting this guy who's ranked number two, number one, number four in the world. And you're getting your ass kicked by these guys that are 145 pounds or 135 pounds. They're fucking amateurs. You're like a bunch of little gnats all around. You just, (laughs) you just try to swat them. You can't catch them. They're just fucking you up. Anyways, but yeah, though I understand exactly. There, there are those guys. It just happens when the lights turn on. You know, some people just rise up. So, you know, hey. All right, next one. 
All right, this question is from Randall Plex. UFC has two non-lineal heavyweight champions and is unable to book them to unify the title. The actual lineal UFC champion is about to fight the PFL slash Bellator champion. Is the winner of Francis slash Renan the true heavyweight king, seeing as UFC cannot deliver the fight that matters most? <sighs> Look, it's, I think it's a great fight. And yes... Francis was the UFC's heavyweight champion until he decided to take a contract somewhere else and, and go on and do boxing for a while and stuff like that. And that's his choice. And just to sit there and say that, you know, John Jones wouldn't be a good fight for him. Come on to sit there and say that Tom Aspinall wouldn't be a good fight for him. Come on. Both John and, and, but, and this is, I'm trying to break this down. Both John Jones, Tom Aspinall, they are absolutely, you know, as good of heavyweight fighters as you will find. And I say that Francis is right there as far as he's got the power and stuff. He's more limited in his skill set as far as where he's good compared to where, you know, they can go with the fight. And I think uh, Heenan Fahea is the same thing. He's limited in his skill set. He's huge but he's limited in his skill set compared to those two to so to sit there and say, well, they, you know, you know, they, they can't be the considered the best heavyweight fighter. Not true. In my opinion, I, I, I think that the Francis versus Fahea fight is a great fight. People should want to see that heavyweight fight. It's going to be a bangers brawl. <laughs> and uh, I think someone is going to sleep in it. I hate saying that because then it never happens, but you know, the 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 John Jones, Tom Aspinall on the other side, Tom Aspinall deserves everything that he has uh, attained. He, you know, it's not his fault. He, all he's done is fight everybody they've put in front of him. Don't take anything away from him. He is their interim champion, and he wants to fight the guy who holds their undisputed belt in John Jones, and John wants to fight somebody else. And so right now that's what, you know, they're trying to go towards, but I take nothing away from either one of them. I'm going to rewind back a little bit. You really think that Hen and uh, Fajera and uh, Francis Ngannou is someone's getting knocked out? Yeah. Yeah. You think so? Yes. Yeah. I think Francis wrestles him to death. I think he might, but he's going to trust me. He'll end up knocking him out. He'll knock out Hen or Hen will knock him out on the way in. Well, <laughs> someone's one, getting knocked out. One way, someone's getting knocked out. <laughs> That's the whole really? Way. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I do. Okay. And then. Um, I agree with you. John Jones has nothing to prove. He can sit and do whatever he wants for right now. He deserves that much. Let him do yep. his thing. Okay. Yep. Uh, Tom Aspinall needs to move on. He just needs to say, Hey, who's my next opponent? Let me just collect my checks. You know, um, I'm assuming he's getting paid championship money, uh, being the interim champ. I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, I somewhere in there. Still. So it doesn't matter. Like take the easy, take all the easy fights you possibly can. That's what I would recommend. Well, he's made them um, look easy. Yeah. That's the way yes. to look at it. In terms of, you know, if, Francis or Hennon and and John Jones and uh, Tom Aspinall, have they ever crossed paths and this and that? I'm always going to lean towards the fighter that can wrestle and has a little bit of grappling. Sure. Always the heavy, especially in the heavyweight division. That's where I'm going to lean. Aspinall and John can both wrestle. Aspinall Aspinall doesn't have as good a wrestling, obviously, but Aspinall's got really slick off of his back and he's really good on the top position in grappling. He's got fast hands and he obviously has some power as we just seen. So. With John is, I, I don't really know where to rate John. We've seen him beat up a kickboxer. That's it in the heavyweight division. We've seen him well, beat up all the other guys. But as you said, and, the, and, the, and by you saying, I, th I think uh, Francis is going to wrestle him. Because Francis can actually wrestle. He can. He's not, he's not bad. And the one thing that he's really gotten good at is his defensive wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's so strong, and he is athletic. And he understands now where to put his hands where how to how to switch his hips how to do these things that make him very difficult to get down now and so it would be difficult for either john jones or aspinall to take uh francis down and it's dangerous as hell getting in there to try oh yeah it is um john's crafty though oh yeah john's crafty you know but if but and you look at this is why i say it's the same thing with mm -hmm. You know, Aspinall, John 
if I was going to look and say, you know, obviously I, I put John as, you know, the, at this point, the best that's ever done it as, as an MMA fighter, as far as his skill set. But if there is a specific fighter type that gives him problems, it is someone that is as big or bigger than he is and has a, has a reach that is similar to what his is. And look at what Francis Ngannou and Tom Aspinall both possess. Yeah, true. All right, George, what else you got for us? All right, the dreaded Raider. What's the Ooh. next rule that will be implemented? <laughs> that's a, Well, that's real simple. That's the one that's going to be November 1st. We have the uh, Dow Fighter rule that will be uh, changed up. But after that, uh, you know, I think you're going to see procedural things. I think you're going to see something with uh, officials as far as another form of uh, foul identification, uh, I think, will come into play as far as we have accidental fouls, we have intentional fouls, but we have a problem with something that's, you know, we need something in between that, and that's to help make the right outcome for a fight when something happens uh, right now the referees are limited in you know where they can go and they almost have to almost say well you know they have to like predict you know what someone was thinking and stuff and you don't want to be in that position mm. so i think there will be a change of allowing another form of uh, type of foul we call it reckless actions i think that will be something that you're going to see coming in and a reckless action would be something like when you see uh, when Michelle Pahea does the backflip. Do I think he's intending to come down and stomp on his opponent and try to foul? No. But by doing the backflip, it's a reckless action that puts you in that position to do it. So now the referee has another form of being able to adjudicate if he does land on his opponent, adjudicate it in a, in a better way. Mm. Interesting. So. I would I would like to see them really make a push on this half point scoring system. Oh, it's, that would be. Yeah, like, I would love to see it too. Yeah, you know I've been there so long and you know trying to you know look at things and stuff. <sighs> Just not you know I I can uh, I can break it down, but I'm I'm going to get myself in trouble I, as I don't want to perjure myself. <laughs> as John Attic said in our interview with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's my job not to perjure myself or I, put myself I, I, in a position where I'm in trouble with somebody. I just feel like these commissions will be doing the the judges, not only the judges but the promotion and everyone involved in the scoring system would be giving would be kind of easing like making it easier for these um lessening the load of negative comments towards them or just People believe now. I just the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm trying to get the words out. To be honest, brain's not working. I'm only on water right now. Um, it re it really just comes down to I look at it now that there is gambling involved. Trying to get it as close to the right decision would be the best idea. And the half point scoring system instead of saying like, "Oh yeah, that guy lost ten nine, it was so close." Like, can we just go a half point? Because now the guy comes back and wins the next round. Just, you know, convincingly, it puts it back into a conversation of, okay, now we're here. Now, but you may end up with more draws. That may happen. Absolutely. Which sucks for the fighters because, you know, most of them are on win uh, show money, win money. Yep. Which sucks. But um, but I just, I think you'll, you'll have a better understanding as a fan or maybe an uneducated fan. You just don't care. But when you're like, oh, yeah, the guy got ripped off. No, no, no. The round was so close, they only gave him a half point. That makes more sense. You know, like, okay, like I didn't give him a full 10 9. Like I gave him a half because it was a close round. Like he barely won. Yeah. Go to the next round. Okay. So it's like, oh, he won by a round. I have a round and a half. I thought he won by this time. You know, so he's taking over now, that kind of thing. You know, third round, he just, you know, it, he lost. He got dropped and lost. Now let's get the scoring system down. Whatever. It's 10 8 and a half, 10, yeah. whatever could be yeah 10 8 10 8 and a half it keeps the the rounds closer i i think with the new way of the fact that you can bet on all these things a lot more just off your phone just off whatever it just becomes i think people are going to start saying like oh yeah this shit's fixed <laughs> nah i just it's i mean i know they always say that a lot of people will say it but it will lessen that i think a little bit a little bit 
because John, it's going to come down to one of these major fights being a total ripoff and going fuck. Like okay, like the t- the tie two of also yeah the scorecard. I know the right I know the right person won. It's all the matter. You're in another country, yeah. and people are betting on these things. And now all of a sudden, you're beep, right. Thirty twenty seven the other way around. You're right, but there is, and and this is where it's hard for the average fan to understand you have been put in this position by me trying to telling you, Hey, I want you to go sit there and watch this fight where you sit in one spot and you see the fight unfold before you. But many times, every time the impactful events occur, you're in a position not to really see them, even though you're sitting ringside. The angles of things, you don't get a good view of what truly happened as far as how the shot landed or how much impact it had or any of these things. And, it, you know, unfortunately, you can be that judge that sits in that seat that you get screwed throughout the fight based upon referee being in your way, fighters being at angles that you don't see. And it becomes a very difficult, you know, difference for you to see where the other two they see it clearly and easily. And that's the reason f- that we have the three judges. You're going to hear some people start talking about, we need five judges. Does it make a difference? I've done it with five judges. doesn't make a difference because it's the same thing. They're all seeing the fight from one point of view, and it depends on where the fight unfolds. Do they get a good view of everything or do they not get a good view of everything? You know, obviously the seat that you put them in, You know, the UFC, although we have people complaining all the time about judging in the UFC, the UFC has one good seat for a judge. The other two are sitting behind the poles for the gate. You know, they have everything. You see them leaning out and everything. And it's like, it is so difficult to judge a fight, you know, when it is, it's actually your name going on that card and it's your score that counts. because. All the judges, they want to get it right. But many times, the view that they get, they're not going to get it right. I see it clearly on the screen that I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Now, they do have screens, but what are they told? Only look at the screen when the fight is in a position you can't see it clearly, you know, and so that's what they do. do. They do what they're told. I've gone to the point of saying they need to switch it. I want you to watch the fight on the screen the entire time unless it's right in front of you right there for you to see i do know that i want them down by the cage because i want them to be able to hear the impacts you know josh how many times have you walked by the cage when someone throws something you go holy shit because you hear the impact of one shot compared to another that's all important feedback for the judges but to sit there and to think that all three judges are always going to get the same score no, we want at least two of them to get the right person. Mm-hmm. That's the most important because it's important that that person wins the fight. There are many times that we have split decisions that people are pissed off and you go, it's okay. Don't worry about all the, all the judges didn't get it right. Sometimes we have the ones like the Tai Tui Avasa. You look and you go, I don't see how you saw that. You know, you didn't see the right things for three straight rounds. But, you know, it can happen. It's true. Okay. Uh, one last question. All right. One last question. Hugo Pickering. Let's go with his question. The UFC Hugo. recently released John Jones versus Cormier 2 with no commentary. I watched it a few times and found myself just watching Big John and his movements, positioning, <laughs> and calmness as John as John Jones rocks DC and the fight ending sequence takes place. Is there anything that stands out to big John about this particular fight and being in the octagon with those two guys and such a heated rivalry rivalry? Dude, I have so many thoughts about that fight. So many memories of that fight that stick with me. I, you know, first off, if you were going to pick out, you know, one of Dan Cormier's best fights, that's it. He made a mistake, and then, yeah, okay, and I understand why you're saying because he lost. But Dan Cormier figured out in the first fight with John Jones, hey, I can't just sit on the outside with this guy. I have got to get inside, and I've got to 
make it a, a nasty, grueling fight. And I'm going to take abuse to get there. And he did. You know, he was taking all kinds of those. You know, John was throwing the oblique kick. He was doing all these things to try to keep DC back. And DC just kept walking forward and trying to throw and trying to do things. And I was, it, I was so impressed with just the mindset of what he had in that fight of, I don't give a shit what you throw. I'm going to fucking walk through you. And that was his mindset when he got, he, he made several mistakes and you can, I can go back and show you in the fight where you see him starting to reach for the kick. John Jones would throw the kick and DC would start to reach his hand down for it. And it's a tell. And finally, John said, here, I'm going to throw that same kick. Nope. Boom, and it comes up top and it hits DC across the head. And DC is, you know, he, he, you could tell he was hurt. He actually held it pretty well, but he was hurt. What really got DC and I got to give it to John Jones on this, that stupid foot sweep, which was beautifully done by John Jones. And the way he did it, when he did it, chasing him down. Look, DC was doing exactly what, you know, as a referee, what I'm asking him to do. Gain distance. Hey, get away from your opponent. You know, stay away. Move. You know, gain time. He's doing those. He's trying to do those things to clear his head. And when Johns ends up hitting that foot sweep and DC, you know, stumbles and goes down. You look and you go, he just burned zero, zero amount of energy in getting this guy to the down who, who even when he's hurt is going to be difficult to just take down and positioned his body perfectly on him. You know, and I can tell you like, I, in the back before the fight ever took place, you know, with DC, you know, DC's big thing was John, don't stop me. I, I, John, I, you know, let me go. I don't ever stop this fight. I'm not going to get hurt. Okay, I understand that. Let me explain to you, if you do get hurt, this is what I need you to do. This is what I'm going to say to you. If I say this to you, this is what I, I expect for you to do in return for me. That's going to let me stay, you know, leave you in the fight. So I went through all those things. And, and look, this is a world title fight. This is a big fight. And I'm going to let DC go as far as I can. And I let him go right to the end where he got knocked out. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I... I don't want to let it get to that, but I have to for him. He deserves it. He's earned that, that fight. So, you know, I, I did let it get to that point. I will tell you, Cain Velasquez was pissed off at me, man. He I was, was going to bring that up. <laughs> he was pissed at me. He goes, God damn you. You let it go too goddamn far. And it's like, Hey, I understand why you, I understand yeah. that's your guy. I understand you love him. I had to let it go that far and I had to let it go that far for him. And he was pissed at me. <laughs> if Kane was going to beat somebody up that night, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it like it, the, the way that it all folded unfolded. Yeah. John was on point, man. The way that he yeah. landed the kick, the way that he followed up with the foot sweep, the way he just slowly, methodically walked after him, and then just he landed his shots and got him out of there. Like that's someone who just tracked after him didn't rush it didn't smother no. his space didn't let the moment get too big for him i've been here take my time he's in trouble i see he sees it all develop undeve um unraveling. he sees it at a speed yeah. that we don't yeah he's it's like a tom brady thing tom mm -hmm. brady sees the defense you know unfolding in front of him and what coverage they're going to and he sees it at a speed that most quarterbacks don't and that's what that's the way John was in a fight. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. All right, hey, that's gonna wrap up our show. But I did want to say we I do have a question for you guys. Okay, and look, this is how we're going to do our giveaway because this is episode 500. This is how we're going to do our giveaway. Big John owns a farm, and he's got two animals on there, okay, that have names. One is a pig, and one is a bull. What are their names? 
<laughs> Say, comment like down that. below. Comment you down have below. To be a member. You, you have, have to, to be, be a, a member. member. So if you guys, yeah, if you guys have to be a member. You can sign up now. Okay, we have a one ninety nine membership and a four ninety nine membership. Uh, but look, we are doing the giveaway. We will be giving away one of the Nate Diaz, George Mazadal uh, shirts, also two with a box of Element. So I will be sending that off to you guys. So the winner will get one T-shirt from the Nate Diaz Mazadal shirt, and then also a box of Element. Speaking um, so of Element, sign up in the description. Every time you order, you get a sample pack with your purchase. Try all the flavor. Mix them all into one super salty beverage and just take sips out of it if you want. I don't Dang, care. He's going to mix them all together. <laughs> no, oh, God, maybe don't do that. But put it in ice cold water. Put the cans in the fridge. You'll love it. Stay hydrated. Stay salty. Even though the seasons are a change and you can still stay salty. Stay active, buddies. Absolutely. Absolutely. So look, this is a great q and I had a great time. This is our episode 500. There is no fights this weekend. So like I said, you still have an opportunity, a chance to win this prize and this giveaway. So go ahead and sign up as a member and then answer that question down below in the comments. And basically, the I think we're going to do the first answer, the first person to answer down in the comments to get them both right. He's got two animals on his farm. What are their names? Well, no, 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 no. Nope. Don't say that. He has two an two animals. I have more than two animals. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. These two animals. One is a pig, and one is a bull. You know what? I'm going to add one more to that. You and he that. also has a dog. You also <laughs> have a dog. So you have three. There you go. You have three. Three animals on his farm. He's got a lot more animals than that. We know. Yep. But answer those three down in the comments. First person to answer. We'll get the, the giveaway. And even though it's not a betting fight weekend, <laughs> next weekend football season starts and my Chicago Bears are playing the Tennessee Titans. Oh! We got a rivalry, John. Who do you think's going to win? I almost hurt myself right there. <laughs> Bears are a minus 205. Tennessee Titans a plus 175. What are Ooh. you going with, buddy? Going on. I, I'm, you're right taking there, Tennessee. Yeah, man, oh. I gotta stick with my Titans, baby. Well, my Chiefs. The play Bears are actually looking we, pretty good. We play opening night on Thursday. Yeah. Well, you're opening to night defend. against Baltimore. I'm against Baltimore, to Oof, tough one. Got a tough <laughs> one. We we have the toughest schedule, hands down. Well, you our, should. Our, our we're trying to three P here. We need the exactly. easiest schedule. That's the whole we point. Need the easiest you should. schedule. No, 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 no. Um, we've got Baltimore. We've got the Bengals, and then we've got like the Niners, all within like a four game period. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Chiefs are a minus 145. Ravens a plus 125. That's a close one. It's going to be a close a, one. Dude, with Lamar? Yeah. Ooh. He, he can play. And then they got, they got the, the Flowers, the receiver. He's good, too. Oh, man. They're a stack team. They're a good team. But I think we got this one, man. I think we got it. So it's one step in the right direction to get in three peat. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's dude. hard, right? It's hard, guys. Isn't it hard? You guys rooting for the Titans and the Bears? I mean, the Bears haven't won. Go to like Bet US and you can <laughs> yes. take the Baltimore Ravens against the Chiefs. You wouldn't do something to that foolish, you guys. Money. Hey, use our <laughs> use our link down below for the Bet US and also for Element, but link down below for Bet US. Give you 125% bonus on your first three deposits. Make sure you guys do that. NFL season is starting. You guys can always win some money with my Chiefs. Go ahead. Go ahead, but not with the Tennessee Titans or the Bears. Although I am kind of cheering for the Bears a little bit because they've sucked so long. I, I want to see them get a winning season. They, they need to have a I good wish season. for them. All right, just, guys, that will do it for us. Just don't start off on the first one. Yeah, that'll do it for us. And John, take us away, buddy. Hey, for everyone out there, thank you for tuning in. I hope the answers were correct for you and you understand what we're saying. For everyone out there, be good to someone. Treat someone good. Make someone's day special. And we will see you.